Well, hello again. Back at Jameson's Repair Shop. So I got this new, this Thunderbird, new to me. I keep calling it a new Thunderbird, but it's new to me. Um, so I've been cleaning it out and stuff, and that, that'll be coming in a video. A few things that I've been working on already, I have been recorded. Uh, mostly taking the back seat out and cleaning. It had a substantial amount of uh, mice in this car at one time, but uh, they seem to be isolated to the roof liner and the back seat, which is nice. But what I want to do here is uh, a critical thing when you own one of these Thunderbirds. And uh, Nick lays it out on vintage Thunderbird repair also is these uh, shift levers. Um, I have three of these now Thunderbirds and two I've already repaired this shift lever. So what we're doing here today, I'm going to pull the shift lever out and uh, I'll show you how to fix it. And hopefully that'll save you some aggravation of this car, a car taking off on you. These cars will jump out of gear because of the wear on the shift lever and I'll show you what it is. So let's put the wheel over. And I have a set of roller pins here and I need to get a pair of glasses on because, you know, so I have the car <coughs> wheel chocked, so it won't get away on me. So I have a set of these pins, these roll pin punch set. I'll try to find the right one that goes in there. That looks like that'll do it. Now I think I can pump, poke it up through the bottom if I remember correctly. So I have a small ball peen hammer and I'm just going to tap on this roll pin to pop it out of there. It doesn't take much. Actually, I'm going to go to a larger roll pin uh, punch. That's a little too small. That's just going inside of it. So this one here is a 532nd one. That's better. There she's coming up. I'm going to pop the roll pin right out because I'm going to put it back in through the bottom. So 5 30 seconds roll pin, I'll just set it there. <clears throat> like I say, the, wheel, the wheels are chalked on this car and you'll want to make sure they're chalked and the park brake on if it works. If not, you definitely have it chalked because you're going to pull this, you end up probably disengaging the transmission. There it goes. So pretty simple. But I'm going to get the grease cleaned off, but I'll show you what happens. There's wear, there's a big groove cut in that. And like Nick explained in his uh, video, every one are going to be like that if it has never been fixed. So this is a critical part if you own one of these old Thunderbirds of this year, these three years that I know of, you should be doing this done, done, you should be doing this or have it done to the car. All right, so let me get in the garage with the welder and we'll show you how we're going to fix it. All right, so we got the lever off, the lever, off of the car. I'll clean it up and show you what needs to be done here. So you can start to see, if you didn't see it before, it got a good amount of grease on this one. This, uh, focusing on it, this groove that's cut in here. That shouldn't be like that. That needs to come out, that needs to be touched up to, with weld until it's square with this and flush flush all the way around. So that groove is, shouldn't be there at all. This should look like this over here. So that's what we're gonna do. I'll get it in the vise and hopefully I can get a good ground on that dirty vise I have. I'm a little tight quarters right now. I, I was doing some <clears throat> brake disc. You might notice the brake lathe is out. I was cleaning up the brake discs on the sprinter van. I'm gonna make a big trip here back east early July so I wanted to have good brakes so I got new shoe new pads and uh, redress the rotors all right so let me get this in the vise seems to be cleaned up pretty decent and I'll uh, I'll wire brush that I'll wire brush that area some so we get a good, a good connection with the weld all right she's in the vise she's set up hopefully you can see that uh, a little bit of light coming through the window there might make it hard, but it's just a few tack welds. And uh, I'm in tight quarters right here now. I'm up by my front of the, th the old uh, convertible. You can see the part of it right there. So let it get the welder turned on, and I'm using 
0.023 wire and I've got the welder cranked right up because I want to hit this hard and hot. All right, so let's go for it. That may be a little too hot. I'm going to crank it down a little bit. She's pretty, uh, pretty high end there. I can't really see it. That's, that's a little better for heat. All right, I'm gonna stop there for a second. I'm gonna get a different pair of glasses because I can't really see what I'm doing. All right, I got another pair of glasses on, so I can actually see. I'll go at it again. That should be more than enough weld on there. Now I have to grind it all back off. So let me get you over to the <clears throat> let me get you over to the bench grinder, and we'll get that ground off. I'll just show you what it looks like. So oh, oh, focus. So there's a healthy bit of weld on there now. And if it needs more after, I'll give it another shot. I should have taken this rubber off. And I didn't. Seems to be holding up okay. But I'll, I think I'll pull it off. I'll cool this and let it, and I'll pull this rubber off. I should have taken that off to start with. To burn that rubber up. Okay, so let's move over to the bench grinder. I did pull that rubber off. Like I said, I should have done that right from the beginning. So if you're doing this, pull the rubber off ahead of time. Save it. So all we're trying to do is make the welded side look like this side. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'll just keep dressing it up until I get it. Just be careful. Don't take too much off the bottom. That's not doesn't need to be. I nicked it there a little bit, but it's okay. I'm going to uh, continue on. All right. I think that'll do it. She's not pretty, but no one ever sees this. So I'll put the rubber back on and put her back on the car. And that'll uh, keep that from jumping out of, uh, out of park. All right, so time to put the pin in. I got this aligned, the hole aligned. Hopefully I can get it in without throwing it out of alignment here. There she goes. Now, if you're worried about hitting the steering column, you could always put a you could always put a, some masking tape around here so you don't hit it, which I, I never hit it. But now I'm going to use the punch. And 
in, just make sure it's going. Should have used a heavier hammer. Make sure it comes through the other side without breaking the column. Sometimes a light hammer isn't your friend. There she is. All done. Now that should not jump out of park on you. <clears throat> so it's a bit fiddly getting it back in. I, I have to admit, it took me a couple stabs, but now I have a good uh, a good mechanism there. So key thing for this is before if you're doing this chalk your wheels really well so the car doesn't take off on you and take it easy on the hub don't beat too hard if it's stuck maybe get some penetrating fluid support it if you have to because you don't want to break this this housing and if you're not good with a hammer tape this all up so you don't damage it but that's it all right well thanks for watching and uh, I highly recommend, like I said earlier, to do this if you own one of these Thunderbirds. This is a safety feature and it must be done. Thanks for watching.